Hey there everyone and welcome back to Hollywood Hills and welcome back to the studio. For the last couple of weeks, as you can see, as we closed out on the racing month of March, we were out on the road chasing the GXCCs and the Farm Jams. Now we are pretty much done with a little road trip. We're gonna take a couple of weeks in studio and then we're gonna get back out there with you beautiful people. Yeah, so I hope everyone had a great Easter weekend, feeling refreshed and didn't eat too many of those tasty eggs, but let's talk about what went down last weekend. It was Farm Jam round number two, Ribotkluf, a brand new venue, and already an instant classic. When we went out there and checked out the track, we knew this was gonna race well and film well. I hope you guys agree. Check out what went down. FJ, round number two, another brand new venue from the lads. This Pirelli and Mottel Farm Jam hair scramble racing action is proudly brought to you in association with Vans Racing, Stack Ups, SVR Innovations, V2 Designs, and Ancat Engineering. Exciting times for the second round of Farm Jams in 2024. A brand new venue, Ribok Luf. So it's rolled around. We're at the second brand new venue for Farm Jam. Leon, well done, dude. What a rock and roller. Yeah, look, uh, Ron, myself, and the team uh, put a lot of effort into this one. And I think what we have here for the guys today is something completely different. You know, I always talk about, you know, when we talk about our junior riders, talk about learning and that sort of stuff. Today, they're going to learn how to do steep de declines and inclines uh, up and some off campus stuff so again it's all about learning and this place just offers a lot of that so i'm really happy it's going to be exciting times in the morning session where we catch up with the action from all the junior categories the pro 85 and the ladies and as always we went down to the pits to see how everyone was feeling jl farm jam racing and this looks like a gorgeous one tell me how you're feeling yeah i'm feeling actually stressed but um weather is looking good the rain came down last night 
Uh, I think it's going to be a good day. Deck from your side, elbows up, and you've got some big competition, eh? Yeah, I got big, um, a lot of competition. Just going to get a good start, and then I'm going to the guy goes into the track. It looks like a mixture of terrain as well. Rocks, grass, a little bit of mud, lots of river crossings. Fun for you guys? Yeah, it's going to be an adventure, so it's gonna, just going to have fun. Ian, seems like a long time since we've been uh, farm jam racing. How much practice have you put in? Not a lot, because I was at my mom. We needed to do a rugby clinic. <laughs> But your dad's got you back now, so obviously you've been uh, getting the bike running. Uh, how are you feeling about this one? Good track for you? Yeah, I think it's going to be a bit thick because I saw the video. There is a bit rocks and I think it's going to be a bit muddy. Yeah. You've been getting good at the whole shots though. If you can run clear air, are you going to go again? Yes, I think. Yo guys, you seem to be getting the hang of the farm jams. Are you ready for this one? Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> From your side, how are you feeling about this one? It looks like it might rain on us as well. Yeah, I think it will be nice because I, I usually don't like the dust at all, but I think it will be grippy, but I just think the grass might be a little bit slippery. A bit muddy and I think it's going to be um, fun today. A lot of turns and a bit of wood and a bit of mountains, but I think it will be fun. Uh, it looks easy but i think when we go a bit after we it's going to be a bit harder okay uh, uh mud a uh, lot of dust and heavy rocks i hope it's going to go great great i hope my i hope my day will be better and i hope not that i'm so erg fall nie maar die uit die farm is big groot vir my so i hope man het die beste i saw this shot maybe it's kind of rocky i think it's going to be a nice track it's it's kind of cloudy today, it's not going to be a hot, so I think it will be a nice race. Well, the terrain looks like technical, like a kind of low fall type of ride, so I think we're going to be in for a nice like foresty trees, rocky section, so you need to keep an eye out for like lurkers in the grass, but I think it's going to be a fun event. Yeah, I see the ladies class is growing. Well, it's good to get competition in. I mean, it's nice to get a battle and to dice and to test your own fitness. So, it's I really like the ladies' class. So, yeah, it's going to be fun. I think it's going to be a bit of a clip. This is for I form James Ken. But this looks like as a couple of strides or a bit of a lack of work. This is also a bit of a mess. Yeah, hopefully it's not even a lot of brickies, because the brickies freak me out. <laughs> There's a couple, so uh, yeah, no, it's going to be fun. We'll see you out there. Um, what, are you, what are you expecting to, where do you expect to finish today? Fourth. So third. Yeah, <laughs> somewhere there. <laughs> and uh, apparently this is your last race. Yes, I'm moving to the States. <laughs> good luck and I uh, hope you have a good race today. Thank you. We wish her all the very best of luck. Thanks for all the action racing, Zoria. We go down to the line and catch up with the juniors. Pro 85s would be the first riders to go out of the gate. This year's revelation has been Derek van Asperken, but he didn't get the gate that he wanted. That looked like it was Alz and Bam who got the cheese this time around. Queen Cat, the two-time champion of the Farm Jam Racing Hair Scramble Series, got her cheese this time around and ran clear air, beating out on Zoria. And then on the junior 85s, this is going to be a two-horse race with two big swingers, Kea Kutsia and Liam Skirpers. On the 65 Pros, Declan Richards had a really good pull off the gate himself, Derek Milan, Milko Deploy, and as always, John Luke van der Vestesen would be elbows up, banging bars the whole way through the day. On the Junior 65s, Alonso Ashadina has been making a name for himself, looking to move up to Pros for next season, another good pull off the gate. And then the reigning 50cc champion, Ian van Rensburg, out there to dominate on the 50cc gate once again. His goal would be to climb the ladder in the Junior 65s also. Let's talk the track with Leon. Tell me about the loop for the kids. Uh, I went out there this morning and a uh, little bit of yesterday as well. It really looks like it's going to be fun, but give me an idea of the length and the kind of idea of the times we're looking at. Yeah, Junior, the, the loop is 11 uh, k's long for them. I expect they're probably going to do about a 20, 22 minute to lap. Um, it all depends on how they're going to handle these descents and uphills and that sort of stuff. But uh, a nice smooth open sections where it's rocky, it's rocky. And then they get clear sections where there's nothing, where it's proper. So it's something that they're going to enjoy, I think. They definitely will. After going out there with the Live X boys the day before, this is heaven on earth riding. Let's go out there and pick up on the racing, starting things out with our 50cc races. The smallest dude out there, brand new to the format of racing, and brand new to racing itself, Blake Kruger. 
with a chaperone as always, going out there and tagging a second place, but he did get the finish, he did see the finish line. And Ian van Rensburg hammers three laps, climbs up the ladder, he'll be moving up into the 65s for next season, but for now, continues for SVR Racing to dominate in the 50 cc's. 65cc Juniors once again giving us almost 10 riders out there. Seb Nell in 8th, Riley Skippers in 7th. And making it onto the show, Julian van der Berg climbing the ladder into the top 6. A nice 11 kilometer loop that in the morning session was lovely and cool. Great racing and riding conditions for all the junior riders to enjoy themselves out there on the course. The top riders running a 5 lap racing format, a little bit further down the road. Four laps, threes, and one rider tagging a one lapper. Obviously having some issues out there on the course. Here you Clausen running a number five with DC Daniel in a number four. Daniel's going to be a championship player. Just clearly couldn't find his groove this time around. Connor Tunis, always good out of the gate. Didn't lose too much time and was the final rider on the four lap racing count. But just the top two riders on this gate tagging five laps under their belt. Second place this time around going to Q and Corneels with Alonso Ashadina once again getting a good pull off the gate and running off into the distance putting over 20 minutes into his nearest rival this is a kid that's looking to move up into the pro category for next season at River Cliff we managed to use the bull run as part of the end of the racing lap it's a lovely feature that we were able to incorporate for this brand new racing venue up the road and into the pro category races. One or two of the big names having problems out there. Declan Richards, who should have been up there running and fighting for a win, only scored two laps on the lap count, dropping him down to fifth on the day, meaning that Low Lombard was able to move up into a number four spot with Zach Attack Stubbs getting real tasty after his move up into the 65s, looking nice and comfortable nowadays. Third place for him. The second place run for Derek Milan. Himself and John Luke van der Vestazen. War buddies out there. Good friends off the track. And they are always right there. Separated by sometimes less than 30 seconds. Declan Richards was in the mix in the early laps, as you can see. Running off the front of John Luke van der Vestazen until he had his problems. And then after that, he was plain sailing for JL. He also did take a dive over the bars, losing the peak on his racing helmet. But he was still strong enough to pull out a one and a half minute lead over You're Derek right? Milan. Richards had a bit of a mare of a day this time around, but we know the kid will bounce back strong. So it was John Luke van der Vestazen for Vans Racing Husqvarna back on the top step once again. Nice to see JL come back. He's had some early season issues. This will get his confidence back on point. Let's check out the results for the morning session and see how the kids were running. Confirmation of John Luke van der Vestazen, six laps scored and counted for himself and Derek Milan. Watch out for that battle to heat up as the season goes on. Good ride for Stubbs in the number three spot. Alonso Ashadina, confirmation of his big win on the 65cc juniors, hammering the rest of the field. Corneels the best of the rest. Ian van Rensburg for SVR Racing gets the cheese once more. Another win with Blake Kruger our smallest and youngest rider in second place. We'll move on up the categories, starting out with our 85cc juniors. These were the kids that ran the fastest laps of the small 11 kilometer loop. The 85 junior category for last season, and in particular this year, we start to see some big numbers coming in consistently, meaning that it's very hard to break your way inside of the top 10 and even harder to make your way inside of the top five. The big swingers this time around, Ebert Hussen getting the job done inside of a number six with Andre Skierpers rocking and rolling up to a number five. Honorable mention for Gab Daly down in eighth place with Gustav Fanny Kirk in seventh as well. Ruvan de Beer, this is a rider we've been watching for a couple of seasons, making his way up from the smaller wheel junior categories and now starting to become a key player. Himself and Vilko Deploy were in a war all the way through the morning session until eventually Vilko Deploy was able to extend and pull around about three and a half minutes come the end of play. Putting De Beer down in fourth, Vilko Deploy for the pick and pay racing squad gets himself up there into third place. 
This seems to be a customary position for him at the moment in his first full season of racing in the 85s. Always cool to see these guys out there finding a dice and finding a buddy that runs the same race pace as them. That certainly was the case for Liam Skirpers and Kyrie Kutsia. It seemed like on the course they were never separated by more than 20 seconds. One or two small mistakes from Skirpers, one or two small mistakes for Kutsia, but very much matched out there on the course. Perhaps Skirpers with a little bit more 85cc experience, able to bring that to the fore and come the end of play. Here you can see has to settle for the number two spot this time around. Losing out by around about a minute and a half to Liam Skirpers, who on the last two laps, along with fueling strategy, was able to pull the pin and get his nose ahead. But very entertaining racing for our 85cc juniors. And congratulations to Skippers for toughing it out and getting the job done. 85 Pros, these were the guys on the small bikes going out there onto the big loop. 20Ks exactly was the number. The multiple and varied terrain. Caleb van der Vestazen, good enough to get his way inside of the top six. Jaden Els, who did take a good hole shot in the morning, dropping down to seventh come the end of play, so he had some problems out there, as did Drikus van der Merwe, only scoring two laps under his belt. Ben van Skalkweg having a great ride up there into a number five. Very solid and consistent rider is van Skalkweg, always bringing home points position. Hannes de Beer climbing the ladder up into a number four. Remember, this was out on the big course, the same track that the ladies would ride and the pro would ride in the afternoon. Mackenzie Bam, good in the gate as well. Looks like she popped out of the whole shot queue in the number two spot. Just dropping back one position, but staying on the lead lap. Mackenzie Bam still also getting used to that 85. It seems like every ride she gets better and faster. Bernard Clanhams has a little bit more experience than the rest of the field after a couple of seasons on the 85s and he certainly has gelled well. One or two big crashes last year and that's in the memory banks. He seems to have calmed his riding style down. A rock solid number two position. Eventually only losing out by just under two minutes to eventual race winner Derek van Asvirken. Van Asvirken had an absolute nightmare of a gate going out of the queue in around about 8th or ninth place, so he had to plough the field. And we did see him go down quite hard on the track a couple of times, but still good enough to walk away with the big win. For the ladies, the big story on the day was round number one winner, Cindy Porovich, a no-show, as well as her good buddy, Edwina Lush, meaning there were going to be different races inside the top three. Third place, even with this quite tasty crash, it was a welcome return to Farm Jam Racing for Tuneshka Tunison. With a great run of form, two laps under her belt in her comeback race. Zoria Fari in her swan song ride as well. We wish her the best of luck on her endeavors as she goes across to go and work in the US of A. Hopefully takes her bike with and can go do some racing. We'll keep an eye on how our satellite goes on out there. But here at run number two of the Farm Jams, second place for Zoria. Rock solid as always. It was the return of the queen this time around. Former multiple Farm Jam champion, Queen Cat. Catherine Mostert for ANCAT Racing Squad, swinging a leg over the 350, trying to get the setup on that thing dialed in, and it looked like it worked a absolute treat, pulling big numbers out of the rest of the girls. We caught up with her after the race. Queen, sorry to jump on you quickly after you finished the race, but uh, that's a hammering you gave the girls this time. Nice way to bounce back. Yeah, thank you. I really enjoyed this track. It was right up my alley. I enjoyed the 350 in the rocky sections. It made me a bit tired, but I really, really enjoyed it. <laughs> were you surprised at how quickly those laps were turning over? 20Ks went past quick, eh? It did. The first lap felt a little long, and then all of a sudden it felt shorter and shorter, and I thought, OK, maybe it's the fitness kicking in, but it was really good. <laughs> Any feedback for the dudes for the afternoon? Is it going to be a fast one or what? I think they, the, the dudes will really be quick on this lap. I mean, they're 100 times quicker than me, but they must just look out for the lurkers because they jump up on you. <laughs> Derek, interesting day for you, but it looks like it was a fun one. Fast loop in the end, eh? Yeah, it's quite fast in the end. It's very fun, nice corners. And yeah, it's just, it was just, it was a very hard race. I crashed a few times. My legs are a bit sore, but it was a fun race. Looks like you guys got away. Uh, I think it's going to rain on the guys this afternoon, but you guys got away with a semi-dry one. Yeah, it was quite dry, but I liked it because there was a lot of grip in some places. Hey, Liam, mullet man, that was a two-horse race, eh? You guys were pinning, banging bars all day. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, very much. Tell me about how the track ran out there, because that track got faster and faster. Yeah, it got faster and faster, but it got the rocks got out of the way, and I just want to 
zij Bikstein, Tu, Gravelpet en Maximum en um, Heimel. Geer, yeah, yeah, a couple of issues out there for you. Tell me how the day went. The first four laps I was at Liam the whole time. It was it was a nice race. It was the rocks and the uphills and downhills. It was a bit steep, but otherwise I think it was a good race. Good for the championship, eh? Yeah. Volko, third place. Looks like he's starting to gel nicely with the 85 now, hey? Tell me how the day went. Yeah, it was fun. The downhills, that was very fun. Yeah, and the big uphills, it was fun, yeah. Confirmation of those results. Queen Cat back on the top step where she belongs, beating out on Zaria Faree. Tinnison, great job for her, and we expect to see Porovic and Lush at the next round as well, tightening things up. In the Pro 85s, big story for Derek van Aswegen, even on a bad day, beating out on the rest of the field, putting Klenems down into second place. Liam Skippers and Gheerje Kutsia put on a big show, beating out on deploy. That was the morning session. We get ourselves ready for the afternoon and the big bikes. This Pirelli and Mottel Farm Jam Hair Scramble Racing Action is proudly brought to you in association with Vans Racing, Stack Ups, SVR Innovations, V2 Designs, and Ancat Engineering. The afternoon session always builds up to a bit of a crescendo. All of the big bangers coming out there, running from the pros, novice, amateurs, and age groups. It was going to be exciting times for everyone, and it was blind racing as well at a brand new venue, which is what Farm Jam are becoming famous for. Big Ben, welcome back to the Farm Jams, dude. This is going to be a belter today, eh? I hope so. I hope this is back for 450s and not two strokes so much. Um, I can't wait to get it wide open today. Just give it give it all. Tell me about the new colours. These are new flavours for you? Yeah, and the Yamaha as well. Normally it was a KTM 500. And um, I must say, I prefer the Yami. And obviously the colours. No more pink and uh, purple. <laughs> Yo, D. Gray, welcome across the border and uh, welcome to Farm Jam, man. No shot, man. You're always so stoked to make the drive up here to come and uh, check it out. It's been such an awesome vibe with all the guys we have with our Zambian boys, Marky and the rest of the Zambian guys, Jasper. We came to the first round, he gave us a call and says, you guys got to come. So we're really, really excited for this year's event. Eh? Marky, from your side, you like it super tech. This is going to be flow tech 50-50. How are you feeling? Yeah, it's going to be interesting on the 250F. Uh, I haven't driven a four stroke in tech yet, so it's going to be fun. Uh, Chuck sounds amazing. I'm so stoked to be here. Thank you to you guys. Eh? D Gray, shout out to the big kids out there. Yeah, I know we big boys out there. Eh? You know what they say, eh? we've got traction on the back wheel. But I heard this is a little bit tech, but I get you, and no one says there's any tech, so we'll see how it goes. And it's very much a 50 50 track today, which is right up your alley. Yeah, the weather's playing very nicely today. Perfect, perfect weather, perfect driving conditions. Track looks awesome. Farm Jam guys always put a lot of effort in. You won't believe it when you see the rocks out there. They've spray painted every single rock in a 20k loop. That's very good news. <laughs> Look, uh, these guys cater for beginners, pro riders, every different level, so it's always a joy coming out here. Mitch, don't feel like I've chatted to you since you were on the 85s. Tell me how things are going now you're on the big bikes. Yeah, it's been going good. Eh? Um, I've been practicing and putting a lot of time in. Uh, I've had a bit of an off-season between March and February, but I'm getting my fitness back, preparing for MP and Roof at the end of the year. So yeah, we're going to try and see how, help, see how it goes. This is for time in the seat and all practice time, get as much out of it as I can, yeah. Me and the boys were out there checking out the track. It looks like you're on for a burner today. Yeah, yeah, it looks like it. I hope there's, I saw on the, when I was spectating the juniors, checked like there was some tech. So I hope it's going to be on the big track. Uh, can't wait for it. It's going to be super lacquer. Can't wait. Sean, the first one, a little bit tech for the big bike, but I think this is a 50-50 track. The 450's got a good chance. Yeah, I think so. And uh, the people say it's quite fast and flowy, so hopefully it will be better than the first one, which you bet is always a tough one. But yeah, if you don't have hills and climbs and bottlenecks, we, we should be fine. Uh, the guys are talking about uh, tyre setup because it's rocks, a little bit of dirt, a little bit of river splash and quite a lot of uh, grasslands as well. What's the setup? I run the tyres, I run on all the races, uh, medium soft on the Pirellis and that's what I do. Matty, farm jam very much up your alley, but this looks like it might be a quick one, hey? Yeah, it's looking good, eh? I, I like the weather, I like the conditions today. It's looking uh, at least no heat, eh? I, yeah, I'd much prefer that today. Yeah. You see there's a lot of shared route as well, so uh, a couple of your teammates will have told you exactly what you're in for, for maybe half of the track at least. Yeah, um, our junior, Blake, he did the... Oh yeah, and our other 85, GJ, they both did uh, the junior loop, so... Yeah, they've told us it's looking nice, so I'm pretty keen, eh? Luckily, it's, you can pull off wherever you want today. It's not, you know, I have to choose a gate or something like that. It looks quite nice today, I must say. It's something new. 
Uh, it looks quite technical, a lot of turns, a lot of rocks I see. Uh, so I think it's going to be quite nice. Tell me about the competition. It seems like Farm Jam has got, uh, almost got famous and uh, everyone's pulled in. Yeah, I think, I think actually they looked at me and saw, okay, well, Ruan's doing it as well. So let's come join in. Um, I decided not to do most of the other events anymore because Farm Jam is more my type of riding. I like the air scramble stuff. And now all of a sudden there's more national guys on the start line. It's not easy anymore for me. And that's lucky. It, that pushes me to level up again and work a bit harder in the gym. Oh yes, and the first gate would be Ruan Smith's gate. The S1 Pro category races, which starts to look like a national championship lineup. Big bangers and all capable of getting the job done. Of course, it comes down to the hole shot as well. That does help things out. Kervis Bester getting his very rare hole shot under his belt. Himself and Alru van der Vestazen, who walked away with the top three at the previous race. And Matt Battersby. Vernon Ordea, also a rare hole shot for the Vans Racing Husky rider. He was joined by Gav Young and Andrew Mostert. There would be elbows up, trying to see what they could do. Jerome Stubbs got a great jump off the line. Himself and Luke Battersby would be going elbows up to see what they could do in the S3 Pros. But there was a lot of tasty talent and international talent lined up on that gate. For the seniors, Tyron Skitter, a no-show for round number one. He was out there and pulling some big numbers, getting the whole shot cheese ahead of Hannah Simon and Greg Hodgkins in the seniors. And for the Masters, Captain Kirk just got his nose ahead, but he would have big competition. Jasper Livlinkoff, Andre Mostert, and many, many more. In the AMs, starting up with the S1s, France de Klerk looking like a tasty bet for the championship, but Big Ben looked like he was all fired up and ready to rock and roll. S2 Ams, Tristan Borges, always going to be a good bet. Got his nose ahead nice and early on his Husqvarna. He was going to try and chase and run out front for the rest of the day. For the S3 Ams, Rod Opperman, so strong, as well as Hansi van der Berg and Ian Minoff. Those were the big swingers in the championship so far as we hit round number two. Grandmasters, such a cool gate. A lot of the guys coming from last season's vintage championship, and it was that guy, Gary Whitehouse, out front once again. And then for the main loop, slightly bigger, but man, you've got some amazing valley to work yeah. with here. And look, River Cliff offers so much. The valleys down here it makes you feel like you're in Dolstrom sort of area. Uh, the big loop are going to do a lot of that. They got three Chilean ice creams to choose from, and all three are, are the same sort of story. It's either very steep down or a slight down, and shorter, longer, and then same with the ups, a short, steep up, or longer, not so steep up. So I think their loop is something interesting. A lot of wood sections, a lot of clothes, like in the dark wood sections, I think they're going to enjoy their side. But some nice open sections, so yeah. easy passing as well. Yeah, definitely. A lot of space for passing. Uh, I can't see that there's going to be any bottlenecks in this one. It's a nice open track. And you organized some good weather. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. That was specially ordered. <laughs> <laughs> Leon, I think we're in great shape. I mean, the story of 2024 for Farm Jam is new, new, new all the time. Yeah, we try to do that. Look, we're definitely going to visit some of our favorite tracks again later the year. But um, we'll try and put in another new one that we got planned for Broncos Parade area. Um, the guys need something different every time. Like I'm back to where they have to learn. And that's, that's what it's about. The feedback from the morning session from the Pro 85s and the ladies was that the track was holding up and rutting in absolutely perfect. The afternoon session was going to be a belter. On the green route as well, it was going to be an interesting situation. The green, we remind ourselves at this stage of the season, a new initiative that the Farm Jam guys premiered at round number one, where new blood coming into Farm Jam get to go out in the afternoon event as the final gate and go race on the junior loop. Chris Kruger was out there with a the number four spot. Remember, he's the dad of one of our little 50cc racers, also new to this format of racing. Louis Lowe up there in third place, and big Rudy Vermeulen putting on a show there, enjoying himself, finally getting to go out on his own bike as well. The fans racing Husky up there in a number two spot. He certainly enjoyed his time out there on the loop. Bianca Edwards, who has made a name for herself in cross-country racing, is starting to work on the rest of the skills that are needed to be an all-round rider. That is hair scrambling. She picked up a great ride with the Bikers Warehouse Honda Squad and walked away with the Green Loop victory. But for her, it was just about getting seat time and saddle time and learning, learning, learning. That's what it's all about. We'll start picking up on the action from the novice category with SGM Kutzer having some issues on the day, but still tagging three laps, scored and counted. Sixth place for him. There was some older machinery out there as well racing in the novice category. And that's what's cool about Farm Jam Racing. 
We've got brand new out-the-box freshies, and we've got something like 20-year-old bikes out there as well. Nina Alba was up there on Bike 69 on number 5, with Ethan Peltzer fourth, and Milan Vanny Kirk squeaking his way inside of a top three, running very tasty lap times as well. Full race time under his belt, and he would be climbing the ladder throughout the rest of the five-round championship. MJ Van Aert, very tasty lap times as well, with a full race time of 2 hours 22 minutes for him. But he just could not match the pace of Dion Jacobs, who hammered the nail, putting 6 minutes into his closest rivals. Ribot Kluf certainly suited this rider's dancing riding style. Staying with the novices and climbing the ladders into the S2s, Martin Els up there on the 31 machine. Sixth place for him and three laps scored and counted. Very consistent lap times and good bunching happening for our S2 novices. They started quite late on the gates as well, so they had some friends around them all the way through the day. Francois Faf de Toy took his machine up there into a number five with Dion Smit rocking and rolling and splashing his way on the Yami 2 smoker up there to a number four ride. Sean Van Rensburg, the main dude out of SVR Racing, picking up a big injury on his arm in the early part of the season and coming back nice and strong. Third place, and looks like the rider who is going to be, once again, solid and consistent on this championship to a challenge. A two-horse race in the early part of the day with Gerard Nell and Kurt Mayberg joined at the hip. Nell starting to have some issues later on in the day, though. Could not stay on the lead lap. Eventually finished down in a number two spot allowing Gerd Mabo to dance and run out front and stretch his legs on his Husqvarna. The only rider on the S2 novice gate to stay on four laps with the rest three laps under the belt. S1 novice, the big bangers, Franco Barnard on the big Honda muscled his way through some of the mud bogs. To be honest, these were just splashes rather than mud bogs. A couple of riders just not really getting their line choice right, but the track did hold up nicely. Chad Eckert rocked his way, always looking factory pro. I was actually lucky enough to lend his dad a helmet on the day as well. How do you forget your helmet? Anyway, these things do happen when you go bike racing and it's sometimes it's a lastminute.com. Danny Webb up the road there in a number four spot. Five laps scored and counted, showing that the big bangers certainly were able to stretch their legs at this round of the championship. A lovely 50-50 track with a little bit of tech to slow the riders down. And then the rest of it was trail riding, which is what hair scrambling is all about. Third gear and nice, letting the big bikes breathe a little bit. So Webb walked away with a number four. Daniel Swartz up the road from him on a number three, taking his Shirko up the road. Clinton Rousseau, rock solid, knows exactly how to get the best out of himself and his machine, the gas gas running faultlessly in the valleys at the back end of Middleburg. Only one rider up the road and a little bit faster to the tune of just over 11 minutes, and that was Marshall Rousseau. Marshall had a great ride out there as well, putting the X714 on the top step with five laps under his belt. A rider to watch out for as we head to round number three, which once again will be a brand new venue brought to you by Farm Jam. Let's confirm the results as we go and pick up on the novice categories. Rousseau and Rousseau getting the job done. Formation flying for those lads, beating out on SWAT, Webb and Eckert. For the S2 novice, all about Gert Mayberg, putting everyone a lap down. First of those was Nell and then Van Rensburg. S3 novice, all about Dion Jacobs, getting the job done over Van Aert and Vanny Kirk, with Peltzer in the number four spot. And on the green, Bianca Edwards with her first win of the season, beating out on Vermeulen and Lowe with Kruger and Ackert in the top five. We get serious now as we go out and climb the ladders. Next up on the scorecard, the amateur category races. S3 Amateurs always gives us very exciting racing. These are the guys riding the smaller capacity machines, but always have very, very strong gates. Often up to 20 to 25 riders in the queue. Dalmain Van Rooyen just outside the box on a number seven ride with Christian Janssen in a number six and Camden Geyer getting the job done into a number five, splashing and roosting his way around the terrain. As you can see from all the shots that myself and the Livex boys were able to go out and find, incredible 
multiple varied terrain and a valley we can't wait to head back to. We run Opperman into a number four ride. He's always a classy rider on these tours with Hansi van der Berg squeaking his way into a top three. That's one of his best rides of the season. Up the road, chasing onto the back wheel of some of the younger riders who are super aggressive as they go out there and roost the terrain. Record Webster, one of the local superstars, we've watched this kid come out of the 65s into the 85s and starting to make a name for himself and get comfortable on the bigger machinery. Certainly using the incredible tour that is Farm Jam Hair Scramble Racing to polish his blade. Ian Minar, always good out of the gate. Always a nice, stylish rider to watch him dance his machine up and down the terrain. And he put his name on the top step in the S3 Amt. Up the road in the S2 Amateurs, once again, some interesting characters racing around out there. Scott Breitenbach, Bert Mo, some of the riders who have been out racing the farm jams for almost 10 years. Cool to see what they could do out there. Tristan Borches, who was a pre-race favourite and a former race winner on the tours, had some issues on the day, dropping down into a number three spot, eventually losing out, staying on the lead lap, but losing out by 11 minutes to eventual race winner. Dirk Kutzia, good enough for a number two spot this time around, took the Yami up the road, obviously got the setup absolutely perfect on that machine. This wasn't a big horsepower track as well, so if you had a really good handling machine, that was what it was all about. Luca de Siena got the job done on his right, taking the Shoko to the top step and tasting victory champagne. Franz de Klerk had a rough day at the office, usually out there challenging for wins or certainly top threes. This time around, the big Viking dropping down to a number six. Big Ben on the big 450 Yami, making that thing look like a 125. Riding in the new colors of Dirk Bike Fanatics, taking himself to a top five. That still keeps him in the championship hunt though. Byron Edwards, Good enough to get himself up there into a number four. One or two small mistakes out there, but everyone was able to get their way through. These small little splashes and roll on forwards. Constant upkeep from the Farm Jam track crew as well. Rowan doing a fantastic job there. Christopher Swat now picking up a support ride. The Bikers Warehouse squad takes his Husqvarna up to a number three. That's a good run of form for him as well. And JP Louis, the main man out of pick and pay up there at White River, gets the job done into second place. Pick and pay squad coming out in force to come and challenge for a lot of the category. Podiums here at FJ. Ryan Neville never got flustered on the day, just let the race come to him. Gave us almost the perfect numbers. Four laps, two hours and two seconds of racing to put himself at the top of the S1 amateurs. No mess, no fuss as they say. It's allowed everything to happen nicely and gently. Even though he got jammed up a little bit, he still moved forward and took his victory. Here's confirmation of the amateur results. S1 sees Neville on the top step, beating out on JP. Swat, Edwards, Nell, De Klerk, Teron and Pience take us to the top eight. De Senna hammered the nail on his competition. Look at the gap there. Almost 10 minutes ahead of Kutsia and Borsches. Borsches should be bouncing back. Looks like he had a bogey event. Ian Minot taking the big win in the S3 amateurs ahead of Webster, Vanderberg, Opperman and Geyser. Now we move up the road to our age group classes. Starting things out with the Grand Masters. Good buddy of mine, Evan Howell, starting to make his way forward in the FJs. One of his best rides of the season so far on the Gas Gas, taking the top six. Dave Thompson up the road from him as well, squeaking his way inside of the top five. Remember, a lot of these riders deciding to move out of Masters or coming in from the vintage categories from previous seasons and going out there and having a race with riders of the same age. So cool to see Ewa Stassen back with us on FGA duties, racing out of the Subaru Nalsprate squad on one of the older KTM 2 Honeys. Himself and Conrad Edwards. Edwards, father of Bianca as well, who's out there on a beta, showing us that he can also get on the bars and see some daylight between a couple of riders. He got rid of Ewa's late on in the race and got himself up there into third place. Pierre Kutzer, 
muscle this machine up, down, and around the trails to get a number two ride going, only missing out on the eventual race win by around about two and a half minutes. In the early days, he actually had some air between himself and Big Gary, but eventually all of that incredible racing history and heritage came to the fore. Gary Whitehouse getting onto a freshie, bringing out a big three honey gas gas, and getting onto the top step once again. So cool to see Gary and the massive Dirt Bike Fanatic squad coming out and supporting Farm Jam once again. For the Masters category, the main dude out of ANCAT Engineering, Andre Mostert getting himself back up to racy pace. Taking a little bit of time out in the early part of the season and starting to click the gears once again. Sixth place for him. The original Viking, Kerbis Young, up the road on an 806, coming out to get his tech riding going once again with a number five ride. Jao Ashadina, so good on the super tech. Had some issues there on the track though, got really jammed up in one of the small river splashes. Lost around about two or three minutes with a couple of his competition going past him. Zhao would have to do the big fight back. Did get back on one or two riders, but eventually stuck down in the number four spot. Pierre Smith danced his way past, probably gave his good buddy a little bit of a rib and a giggle as he went on through. Smith still had enough gap at the end of the day to walk away from the third place. Captain Kirk, Sean Kirk on the fast racing gas gas, dropping down one position from his whole shot. Himself and Jesper Liblinkoff getting the job done. Liblinkoff and a ton of the Zambians coming across the borders. The only rider in the last couple of seasons to match up to Kirky. Liblinkoff got it done this time around once again. In the seniors, great to see a couple of new riders coming in. Greg Hodgkins. Famous for going out there and laying out a lot of the tracks for the low felt enduros, showing his form. Tyron Skitter walked away with the FJ win last year at Cannonball Pass this time around, dropping down to a number five spot. Certainly fitness came into play. DJ Milan almost had a good lay down and had a roll around in the mud, but managed to keep himself upright for a while, dropping down to fourth place. Hannah Simon, a former FJ champion, had a tough day at the office this time around. A couple of mistakes dropping the would be champ down to third place at this round. Cody Pianev, probably the standout ride of the day in the senior category, surprising a lot of folk getting himself up there into a number two spot. But the biggest story of the day was Carl DeToy, the VW Mastercars Hatfield rider. Good at the high speed stuff and incredible at hair scrambles as well. His first FJ win. Carl, I thought you could just swing off the back. Clearly you can ride some tech as well. <laughs> no, it, uh... It suits me a bit more, the track was gnarly, the track was awesome, it was marked well. Leon and the boys really, really did a good job. Eh? I just would like to thank Big Chris at Mastercar, the family, the wife behind me. That, that, that was a day, eh? that was awesome, awesome stuff, I loved it. Thanks everyone, thank you. Try to break down the track for us as well because obviously we went and did a recce, but riding it is one thing, racing it is another. Yeah, no, definitely racing it, uh, the marking was on top. Uh, every marking, every danger marking, it was so wild. A bit of everything, a bit of fast flowing, mud. Uh, overall, 110%. Well done, boys. Gaz, fantastic to have you back racing in the Grand Masters. Tell me about your day. Uh, it was awesome, man. Uh, yeah, good to be back in my, yeah, the old box of liquor, but uh, uh, the new generation stuff uh, soaks up bumps and everything up. Uh, good for the old toppy there. <laughs> but he's here, but yeah, great loop. Fantastic, a bit of everything and uh, yeah, happy to be back and yeah, see you next one. Yeah, Juice, um, yeah, what can I say, you lost a bit of sky in your rounds there. <laughs> yeah, it was an interesting event, eh? very nice, I must say a very nice venue, the route was good, eh? very, very good, no complaints. Apart from no sky in the rounds, where did you pick that up? <laughs> Where's that now? Uh, where did you pick up the puncher? Where did you pick uh, up the flatty? Uh, last three, four k's. Yeah. Uh, not too bad. Yeah, I just uh, went slightly out the line, and it bit me. <laughs> Ty, a bit of a wild one today. How hey, you had to push for that? Definitely. Um, quite a quite a tough track. Um, nice and choppy. Uh, loved every second of it. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say. I mean, uh, I don't know where we finished, but uh, I had a draw all the way. So that's what all that's all that matters. Got a bit crazy out there, hey? How's that tech zone at the back? That's oh, very nice. Very, very good. I think I need to work on my fitness a little bit. My hands are definitely a bit sore, but uh, a lot of fun was had. It was a great race, sir. Really enjoyed it. A uh, little bit of everything. Weather was 
perfect, perfect. Yeah. Nice and cool the whole day. Um, no dust. Beautiful. 100%. It was the, it was marked very well. Um, the lurkers were marked very well. Uh, great race. Always cool to get feedback from the top names as well as some new blood out there. Here's the big win going to Carl Toy in the seniors ahead of Pierre Neuf, Simon and the rest doing the chase down. Lublinkov stands on the top step once again beating out on Kirky, but that's going to be a championship challenge that goes down to the wire throughout the rest of the season. Big Gary Whitehouse beating out on Kutsia, Edward Stassen and Thompson. Our age group racers giving us some entertaining laps out there. Now hold your breath and hang on to something tight. It's pro racing time. As always, the pros gave us the fastest lap times of the afternoon session. The S3 pros, a lot of the junior upstart riders coming in for this one. Sean Katsavis and Mitch Fallon banging bars the whole way through the day. Staying on the lead lap as well. Five laps scored and counted. And it looked like a motocross race. These guys were all over each other. Raymond Language, incredible story for Language. He's always so good on any type of terrain. Puts in the miles, puts in the time. And it does pay the bills as well. Fourth place for him. Jerome Stubbs after getting a solid hole shot on the 699 Axis racing machine. Drops down to third place come the end of play. The pace was incredible. The top three riders separated by 10 minutes with eventual number two spot going to Struik. This was an amazing ride. First time across the border racing with us on the FJs. From Zambia, Michael Struik on the 115. Learned some lessons out there on the course, but hammered the nail only losing out on the eventual race win by five minutes. Stian van der Herbe, one of the top superstars coming out of the 85 pros in the last couple of years, even though he lost around about 40 seconds here, did still run out front there and brought all of that FJ experience all the way to the top step. Remember the name, van der Herbe is on the up and up once again in 2024. That was the S3s. Let's move forward now into the S2 Pros. Fifth place going to Jacques Bordenhorst. We couldn't get a shot of uh, Gav Mostert out there, but welcome back to racing to Gav Mostert. Bordenhorst, good enough to break his way inside of the top five with four laps under his belt. Everyone up the road from him staying on the lead lap. The first of those, Andrew Mostert. Mostert, a top bronze rider at previous running of the Roof of Africa, stayed inside of the top 50 all the way through the racing weekend. And he's starting to come back into the form that we know that he can deliver for the ANCAT racing squad. On the back wheel, Werner Nordia. Fetties after a big hole shot, dropping down just a couple of positions to third place. Gav Young was up the road from him, himself and Nordia banging bars the whole way through the day practically. Racing out of Bikers Warehouse and Vans Racing. The guys put on a huge show out there with Gav Young looking like a completely different rider this season much more comfortable on his 250. The story of the day though was a breakout ride and a breakout position for fast KTMs. Tyron Paltzer turned his hand to cross country, enduro and hair scrambles. Takes the win in the S2 Pros and his first farm jam overall. Congratulations. D Gray came across with a ton of Zambians. The kid out of KZN showing what the big kids can do out there at farm jam, his first time out there. Ron Smith, a former multiple Farm Jam champion, as he said in his pre-race interview. It's starting to get a little bit tight out there, dropping down to a number six, but still happy with his ride and the setup on his machine. Matt Battersby starting to climb the ladder in the pro ranks as well since he's moved up onto the big three honey. Battersby on the biker's warehouse machine getting a number five ride going. With the Devastator, Devin Smith in fourth place, also a former multiple Farm Jam champion. But as we said, there are so many tasty dudes on the gate nowadays any of the top six, maybe seven riders, can walk away with the wins. John Berta showed a little bit of a flash of brilliance at the end of last season, swinging a leg on a 300 machine and coming farm jamming. And since then, he has been on the tour with us. Third place for him. Erhard Airtime Vierkus came back farm jamming. Another former multiple FGA champion coming back with the number two spot actually closed things down big time on the race leaders at one point and then got jammed up in a little bit of traffic. Second place for him, but it was Kervis Bester on his dad's bike as well that squeaked a win. Just over 30 seconds was his advantage come the end of play. 
first place in the S1 Pros and a second place overall. But it was Palzer with the cheese this time. Ty, an amazing journey this season. Something has really just fired with you and this is the first big one. And that smile tells the story. Yeah, yes, yeah, I don't know. I had a bit of a bad start. I was like fourth. Started just picking the Oaks one by one by one. Caught up to, I think, John Buerta. Passed him, caught up to um, Quibus, passed him, and then he was just maintaining every lap. My fast KTM didn't, my, my KTM didn't skip a beat, and I just like to say thanks to Farm Jam. They, they Farm Jam really put a good job into the route, well marked. Really, really enjoyed this route. So, yeah, all in all, a good weekend for me. Uh, third year doing Farm Jams, and I'm um, thoroughly enjoying all of them. So it's quite, quite a good family thing as well so it's often the missus has come and they sit here with the lattes and enjoy it so it's a nice atmosphere. Moved up to SV Pro Pass class, um, thoroughly enjoyable, um, the speed's a lot better and more flowy in the top so you know, not as much dust and people that you catch up to so I enjoyed it. Yeah. Let's confirm the pro results then. Bester with a win off the gate in the S1 Pros and second overall beating out on airtime Berta, Smitty and Battersby. S2 Pros, all about Tyron Peltzer getting his gate, but also walking away with his first FJ overall. Congratulations from all of us, beating out on Gav Young and Werner Nordia. A massive improved ride for Gav Young. And Stian van der Heerwe hammered the nail ahead of Struik. Welcome to FJ Racing, Mike Struik. A standout ride for him, beating out on Stubby, Language and Felon. And that was it from round number two of the FJs. We hold our breath and get ready for a brand new race and a brand new venue going forward into round number three. There has been an adjustment on the calendar as well to make space for the national enduro event happening down in KZN. So mark your calendars. The next venue will be on the 29th of June, giving you guys plenty of time to get training and set up as we go forward into round three of the championship. The new venue will be announced over the next couple of weeks, but mark the calendars and get ready for the rest of a five round tour at Farm Jam Hair Scramble Racing Championship in 2024. This Pirelli and Mottel Farm Jam Hair Scramble Racing Action is proudly brought to you in association with Vans Racing, Stack Ups, SVR Innovations, V2 Designs, and Ancat Engineering. So if you are out there, you'll know that this is going to be an instant classic. If you weren't out there, make sure that you line up with the FJ boys next year. We know that this is going to be a firm favorite on the calendar, and they'll probably hit quite early in the calendar as well. Probably hitting round two or round three because this was an absolute perler. So while we're talking about the FJ guys, just a little bit of a news flash here. They have reacted because of a date clash with the National Enduros. So they've moved their next round, that's round number three, that was scheduled for the 17th of May. That has now been moved out until the end of June. The reason for the move out is to make space in the calendar. It's also, if you want to see the silver lining here, it's going to allow Leon and Rowan to go and find another brand new venue for us. They're scouting the back area of Bronco Sprite at the moment, but they haven't firmed things up. They will let us know in due time and tell us exactly what is gonna be going down. But round number three is guaranteed to be another brand new venue. And then check out their calendar. Rounds number four and five are classics. We go back to Sergeant Peppers for round number four, and then we close things out at Sun Gitti, which is how we finished the season last year as well. So it's still a very, very tasty looking calendar. It just allows the boys to find a new venue and also gives you farm jammers a little bit of extra time and training to go and hit a couple of other rides and get yourselves locked and loaded. 
What's coming forward in the racing month of April? Well, for us, it's a little bit weird at the moment. We're looking forward to the next round of the GXCCs. That's going to be round number three in Bapsfontein. That's on the 20th. But before that, we're looking to see if we can work with the guys for the National South African Cross Country Motorcycle Championship. Last year, that was covered by our friends over at MTN and Speed TV. We're in negotiations with those guys at the moment, but it's getting a little bit late in the day. So it's touch and go whether we're gonna actually be out there, but we are guaranteed to be on the line with you at the GXCCs. So get your entries in for that, and we'll see you out there on the line. Otherwise, work off those Easter eggs, guys, and we'll see you out there on the trails.